Philip, what's one or two of the key reasons that Linden Labs and Second Life has been so successful? Is there any sort of key lessons we can take from that? I, I think there are a number of businesses that have been successful recently because they've been able to let go, uh, release control over their marketplace, uh, their users, uh, their content, whatever that means. Um, I think if you look at, uh, you know, th there are so many opportunities using internet technology today to fundamentally empower people to do something new. But as a company, you have to recognize, and this is quite rare, that to empower people, you must necessarily sort of free them as, as users of a product or of a service. And Second Life is that kind of thing. You know, Second Life primarily was successful, I think, because of timing. The, the, uh, there were many people who tried to build things like Second Life uh, as much as, you know, say, a decade before we started. But the problem was that the technology, broadband and computer graphics, really wasn't there. And so people were dreaming about the idea because it's such an incredible idea, but they weren't able to execute using the technology of the time. So we started at a time, 1999, when the right technology was there. But I think as a company what we did right in addition to that, in addition to just having good timing, was that we correctly anticipated that what would make Second Life remarkable was if everything inside it, just like the real world, was owned and created and monetized and developed completely by the people who were using it in a way that was very open and free like the internet itself. And that decision as a company is a hard one to make because it requires a lot of, uh, it requires giving up control over a lot of pieces of the business that one wouldn't conventionally want to give up. Uh, I was quite sure from the beginning that I didn't have all the answers and that a, a very uh, sort of a upfront design for what Second Life was going to become and an upfront you know, management team wouldn't, wouldn't be likely to be effective. That we'd have to make a lot of changes as we went along, a lot of changes to the business model, a lot of changes to what we were building. And so from the beginning I empowered, I, I said, we've got to design the company somehow so that everyone is a strategist, so that everyone in the company is meaningfully participating in the strategic exercise, not just the execution, but the strategy of what the company should do. And that leads you to a kind of a different culture, which is more like living together in a city or a community in some sense than working in a company. Uh, it's a different architecture. And so from the beginning, I think the fact that everyone was encouraged to be a designer and to be strategic uh, made the company really fun. And then there was a lot of other things we did to make the, the work environment pleasurable. Uh, in addition to challenging and rewarding, which you often see, uh, certainly in other places, at least the good ones. So how do you turn your average employee into a strategist of the organization? Well, as I said, for us, it's interesting. Uh, we did that all the time, and the, the way we did it was a bit different than what you might think. Some companies try things like saying, well, you should apportion you know, a piece of your time, a day a week or whatever, to working on whatever you want, right? This is not a bad idea. I mean, it certainly gets people to, you know, it shakes them up a little bit and it tries to get new ideas out of them. But really what, what, what we did that I think was better was from the very beginning we said on a week-to-week -week basis, you need to consult with all the people around you about what you should be doing. But then you need to ultimately make the decision about what your work schedule is. What are you trying to get done this week, for example? What project are you working on? And then what we did that was very unique and different was we took very seriously the idea that each individual in the company had a substantial amount of more freedom than usual. They were expected to be strategic, figure out what to do. And what we told everyone was you're responsible for making the best contribution you can to Second Life as an employee of Linden Lab. You have to figure that out. You're, you're, the, the management team can help, but they're not going to decide that for you. You have to decide it. And so you are held accountable in this kind of a work environment for having done that. So you literally send an email every week that says, well, this is what I thought I could get done last week and I also believed that it was the best use of my time and here's how I did on it. And so very high transparency and very high accountability and then a lot of freedom is what is fundamentally different, I think, about the kind of company that we've built and I think a lot of companies in the future are really going to work the same way. So I love that. Dump the quarterly strategy and go for weekly, sort of bite-size, activity-based management. Very specifically, that's what we did. One week at a time, you took an email and you wrote down 
three or four things that you were trying to get done this week. Not everything, but just the top things that you thought were important. And then the next week, when you send the next email, you cut and paste from the one last week and you say, done, not done. And this email list uh, goes to the whole company. So anyone in the company can see anyone else's work list. And that's, that's an idea that's very powerful uh, and, and I think it's an idea that we're going to see companies use a lot.